Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever the time may be. Welcome back to the channel, or welcome for the first time if you're new around here. My name is James, aka Widowed, and this is your ultimate, complete area picking guide for Leaks 5 Raging Echoes. We have got a ton of information to go through today. I'm going to be going through every single region one by one, starting off with the default regions and then moving through to the ones that you have a choice between. We finally got the Echo Boss information today, which I've been waiting for before making this video. I'm sure you've seen other people have already made videos like this for this year, but I wanted to make sure we had the Echo Boss information before making this video because I think it is a key part of picking your areas this year. So here we are now. I'm not going to waste any more time because we've got plenty to go over like I say absolutely tons of information here and if any of the information you see here today you want to remind yourself on or look into further the link to this powerpoint that I am going through right now will be in the description of the video so it's public y'all can check it out y'all can make a copy of it and save or whatever you want to do with it you know but leaving it there for y'all to find okay with all that being said it's time to move on and take a look at the first region that we have unlocked as a default. It's important to look at Mislin and Karamja before we look at the rest of the regions because we need to be aware of what Mislin and Karamja have when it comes to considering the value of what the other regions are giving us. So to start off with we have Mislin. There's three slides for each region here so this is the first slide. Also completed quests you can see there's a ton here and all the prerequisites for any quests that need them have also been auto completed. So everything from Fairy Tale 2 auto completed everything from Bone Voyage auto completed and Dragon Slayer 1 plus all this shit here. Tons of stuff as well as Druidic Ritual for Herb Law and tons of areas as you can see here. We've got not just the whole of Lumbridge, Drano, Barb Village, Edgeville and Varrock, although keep in mind not the Edgeville Monastery. We've also got the whole of Soul Wars Isle, Zanaris, Fossil Island and not on this map but also included is the Abyssal area so you can go to the Enchanted Valley as well basically anywhere that you can access with a fairy ring that's not in the main world of Gilanor in a different region you can get to as a default for Mistlin so nice to know a Death to the Dorgishan newly added to the auto pops along with Romeo and Juliet and the Soulsbane but Death to the Dorgishan being the most important of those as it does give access to that bone crossbow right away you can get that as long as you've got a bit of gp from the goblins in the basement of lumbridge so plenty on offer here and you have fairy rings and a dream and stuff that's freely reclaimable from the sage in lumbridge so you're all good you can get around from the first minute in terms of what content the region actually has to offer there is a mixed array we have as i already mentioned the abyssal areas so you can get to the abyssal sire and abyssal demons to get a whip there once you have the slayer level as well as the unsired and the appropriate rods that come with that we've got Ob and briar fighter and everything they drop we've got some dragons of, of various different dragons that can offer the draconic visage the zombie axe is a bit of a question mark at the minute, as are the tormented demons, because we're unsure how those will be unlocked. It seems to be that they're expecting everyone to have while Guthix sleeps done, but they haven't announced it as an autocomplete yet, so was there's still a bit of a question mark on those ones. But I have a feeling those might come in some sort of special package, like a bonus alongside your tier 6 relic or something that unlocks while Guthix sleeps. Something along those lines, just keep an asterisk next to that one, because I have a feeling they want us to go and do that content since though it's new, and it's currently kind of impossible to pick regions that would allow you to do it. We've also got Scurrius new this year and the Deranged Archaeologist on Fossil Island as well as a ton of skilling content with all of Fossil Island stuff, Solicept, Herbivore, Bird Houses. We've got Great Jumpers on Soul Wars Isle, the Water, Earth and Cosmic Altars and some Hardwood Patches, Seaweed Patches and a Bush Patch. Keep in mind, we don't have any herb patches in either of the two starting regions, so you're probably going to want to pick a herb and allotment patch in at least one of your regions. That's why I think it's important to just go over these first before looking at the other choices. And in terms of mini games, we've got Soul Wars, the Volcanic Mine, and Pura Pura, if you count it, for the Impling 
farming. Soul Wars is probably going to be nerfed a little this year because it was overpowered last year. But if it isn't nerfed, definitely keep an eye on it is my point because it, it was nuts. Like, you got something like 16 times the regular amount of zeal from the minigame and then your zeal transferred into like 16 times the amount of XP it usually would. So you just got like 256 times the amount of XP you usually would out of a Soul Wars game. It was ridiculous. And I think they removed the cap as well if I remember correctly. So like you could just go super high with it. I imagine it'll be nerfed this year, but if it isn't, keep an eye on it. And I don't think there's anything else major to mention there. We've got a couple of Slayer Masters, Vinaka and Cheldar. For those who don't know, all Slayer Masters in leagues have the same task list, which changes depending on which regions you have unlocked. But it doesn't matter which Slayer Master you go to, they'll all have the same list. I think even Crystalia counts in that, like she's not a wilderness master anymore she just gives you the same the same tasks so that's how it works in leagues uh, it doesn't really matter who you go to and they don't have combat level requirements either all right there's no echo boss in the starting region so we don't need to worry about that useful shops we've got all the varrock stuff so runes staffs uh, your basic like ranging and plates and things like that there's a sword shop we got the draenor markets soul wars reward store volcanic mine there's an irish dragon weaponry and there's also an irish jewelry store these could be handy if you're planning to take the golden god relic that we've already seen spoiled that can alk things there's a ruby ring store in zanaris that sells five at a time and you can turn a ruby ring which costs 1k into roughly 3k with the golden god so that's going to be like the perfect thing to buy a huge stack of to get it auto alkin if you are going with that relic we've got the recipe for disaster chest though with limited access because depending on which regions you have there's only going to be a few of the council members that you'll be able to save and in terms of other features the Varrock Museum gives a lot of stuff especially when you start filling it up with those fossils from the island getting them from crabs or sulliceps or whatever else you're doing you'll get a ton of XP lamps out of the museum and all those XP lamps will give you bonus XP because everything in leagues is boosted we've also got the stronghold of security of course for that quick 10k out the gate to get you some starter cash we've got ammonite crabs on fossil island the cooking guild whatever the hell that's worth. Moving on from Mistelin to a smaller and quicker region to cover, we have Karamja, which is Karamja and Crandor and Moral Wreck. Those are the areas that are in this. Just Shiloh Village auto completed. Jungle Potion is auto completed, but Tybor One Eye Trio isn't. Done Jungle Potion off the base and Shiloh Village, but there's no Tybor One Eye Trio done. You have to do that for yourself to learn the Karam One Fishing. Nothing major to point out here. We all know the areas, what they do. The Fight Caves and the Inferno are the two main tasks that people are going to be coming to here to get themselves that fire cape that infernal cape personally never managed to take down the infernal myself but i will be making many attempts at it this year i can only assume fight caves most people will do by the end of this leagues if they haven't already previously it's part of the process really like everyone goes to do it on every account and if you haven't felt confident enough to try it before trust me you will in leagues because you'll be super overpowered we got duradel as a slayer master as well as the brimhaven dungeon and it's metal dragons and weird ass enemies down there. We've also got Sarket Rax challenges, which will be worth a ton of league points, so definitely worth looking at, even if you wouldn't usually sniff in their general direction. One Jad is the first challenge, that'll be worth like 200 league points. Two Jads is the second challenge, that'll be worth another 200 league points. Two is not much harder than one. Once you get to three and up, it gets difficult, but if you can do one Jad, you can do two Jads. We've got the Fire Cape and the Infernal Cape, of course, as well as Obsidian weapons and armor so everybody can get a decent ish melee setup it's not good defensively but we can get strength bonus on the obby plate and legs and the shield as well so everyone can get some strength bonus from that as well as the draconic visage from those dragons as already mentioned and brudu shields from table when i clean up gout tubers as well are boosted drop rates in leagues brimhaven agility arena did have a recent overhaul as well so it might be worth a bit more this time around i haven't played a great deal of it since it got changed so i can't vouch massively on that but it could be good and we have gem rocks which 
could be auto chiseled with the new power miner relic if you're taking that. We got Karamblans, which can be auto cooked with the new animal Ranga relic if you're taking that. And I guess you've got hardwood tree farming. I'll throw that in if you <laughs> if you're on the the lumberjack one. Brimhaven is the default POH, so if you buy a POH, if you complete Daddy's Home, it will put you in Brimhaven to start with, rather than Remington in Leagues. And that's about all there is to Karamja. Moving on now to the actual first region that you will have an option to pick between. Now we got nine regions to go through, and we're starting off with the last page of Karamja, because I forgot there's one more page of Karamja. Useful shots, we got the Sar or a gem store. This is super useful, especially the unlimited stocks. It's the only place you can get Onyx without getting it as a unique item drop. So you can get an Onyx super easy, especially if you have a massive cash stack in leagues or massive chaos rune stack, you can convert that into Toggle and buy yourself an Onyx very easily. We've got the rune store to do that, as well as to buy any runes that you might want if you have spare Toggle. Teodish's Karam one stall will have unlimited cooked Karam ones and if you have golden god you'll be able to buy those noted so you've got unlimited crown ones right there they're quite a cheap price from what i remember and the shrimp and parrot gives a lot of food as well that you can buy of uh, varying different different sizes there chart ships are also available with all their shops of course okay now moving on to our first actual choice region we have asgarnia the kingdom of Falador and its neighbouring zones and troll country and goblin country and the Void Knights outpost and Entrana, Rimington, White Wolf Mountain, Tavali, Berthorp, all of this that you see in here and the auto-completed quests as you can see with all their prerequisites as well. Freshly added this year is Dwarf Cannon, you no longer need Kandarin or multi-cannon you get it as soon as you enter Asgarnia as long as you have that 750k to pay for it and a shit ton of steel bars to make cannonballs you're probably gonna want power miner if you're in Asgarnia y'all not to mention the dwarven mine and the mining guild is gonna couple with that the main end game content here comes from the god wars dungeon and Cerberus. There's the Whisper as well though, that being said. But we've got all the God Wars bosses, Ziliana, Kree, Krill, Grador, and Nex, as well as Cerberus. We got the Dwarf Cannon available, we got Whisperer Rares, Void Knight Armor from Pest Control. You can play Pest Control and get bonus minigame points. We've also got Morgany Homes for the Skilling and Rogue's Den to get that double thieving in. It can be very nice in leagues to double thieve yourself a Blood Shard and get two and then you're good for the rest of leagues. <laughs> Turrell as a Slayer Master and the Warriors Guild so you can grab yourself a Defender as well as Max K Pile. Don't forget about that one through the Warriors Guild. There is tons to offer in Asgarnia, even Giant Maul for those of us who are looking for a less intense boss to take down in our spare time and getting that mole locator from the Falador shield is easier than ever because they made it so you only need one piece of the outfit, not all of them, from the Motherload Man. Two herb patches available in Asgarnia is very strong. You got the one beneath Falador and Troll Stronghold for your herb patches and allotments. Falador rooftop course, Rimington and Tavalif player owned houses, Motherload Mine, Camdozel, couple of guilds there and some runic altars. There is a ton on offer here, honestly. And to cap it all off, we have Echo Cerberus available if you get the Echo Orb from regular Cerberus. And he is dropping the, the Dog Sword. I almost said the God Sword there. The Dog Sword, which is a combination of all of the God Swords into one. Very spicy drop. In terms of useful shops, we've got Jatix's Herb Law Store. You can definitely kickstart your journey in that regard. Martin Thwaites Lost and Found to get lockpicks and a couple of other niche items. The Void Knight's Reward Store, where we already mentioned you can get that Void Knight armor from, as well as Dwarven Mine Shops and their re associated reward shops from the various different minigames in the Dwarven Mine. The Warriors Guild Shops, stuff around Falador. We've got Tavali Dungeon, which has blue dragons, black demons, black dragons. Plenty of stuff in there to get your teeth stuck into, like for Slayer monsters, or if you're just looking for some easy dragon bones. Troll Country, with that extra herb pouch. With Goutweed, if you want to give that a whack for some weird fucking reason. Port Saruman Chart Ships, 
Edgeville Monastery to get your easy free prayer robes, Canon, as we mentioned earlier, and Max K Pile. And I guess I'll just say in general for Asgarnia, it's a very strong melee region because you have the Defender, the God Wars stuff, like full Bandos armor. Y you have a lot of good stuff all around, really. It can be very grindy, but if you're happy to grind, 500k see each of the god wars bosses then you'll probably like green log them all <laughs> and uh and get a lot of league points in the process so there's definitely a lot on offer from Asgarnia. the desert next all to complete a desert treasure to prince ali rescue and ikthorin's little helper this means you have access to the ancient spell book as soon as you unlock the region you just have to go and change yourself over on that pyramid not only that you'll be able to pick up a ring of shadows for a nice little bonus in your ring slot and you can go through the gate for free thanks to the prince ali rescue auto complete i don't need to explain all the areas of the desert you can see them right there and you know what they are some maybe less apparent areas that come from the desert are guardians of the rift is actually from the desert because of the quest line that leads to it. So that's just one to, to take note of that isn't on this particular map here. The desert, it offers our first raid, Tombs of a Mascot. And keep in mind, your raids can grant all different mega rares. So that gives you all the mega rares and all of Tombs as rares. We've got the Calphite Queen as well and the Leviathan, Dust Devils for some 6 layer XP, we've got all of Temporos and Guardians of the Rift rares, Mage Trainer Arena stuff, your Infinity Armor, Bones to Peaches, Mage Book, which recently all got buffed, and the arena itself was made much easier to do and quicker, so that's nice. Dust Battle Staff from those Dust Devils, the Pharaoh Scepter so you can make an awful altar, or just teleport to different places around the desert. In terms of the minigame, like I mentioned already, Temporos and Guardians of the Rift there, Pyramid Plunder, so you can get that Pharaoh Scepter, Sorceress's Garden if you fancy some squirking, and Giant's Foundry for a ton of smithing XP. This was how I did a lot of my smithing late game last year in leagues actually. I did a bunch at Giant's Foundry because it was that good for the massive like 400k XP drops from finishing a sword. It was crazy. In terms of skilling, you got the Agility Pyramid for a bit of extra money making if you want it as well as blackjacking being one of the best even methods in the game, relicless. Pull of Niche for a P.O.H. and a rooftop course. We got sandstone and granite mines, not that anyone ever uses granite for granite, but sandstone definitely a viable way of getting tons of sand if you feel like doing some glass blowing and the desert hunter area for whatever the fuck that's worth. Moving on to the Echo Boss, it is the Calphite Queen and it gives you a new blowpipe basically. This is pretty much a toxic blowpipe, but instead of any special attack or venom and shit, it's going to roll your accuracy twice instead and take the highest result. So it's basically Osbunton's blowpipe and it looks like a big weird insect part. So yeah, I guess a Drygor? Is that like a part of an insect? Like a mandible? Looks shit, but... I mean, it It looks aesthetically shit. It looks like a very strong weapon. We got the Age of the Spellbook, as we mentioned, as well as the Shrine Tell Dennis, which completely resets your stuff. It's a bit like a Ferrox Enclave Rejuvenation Pool, except it also buffs you slightly above your base values on Health and Prayer, which is nice to have. Bandit Camp is a sick place to AFK if you put on a piece of armor or gear that corresponds to any god other than Zaros then they'll all get angry and auto attack you inf indefinitely. So you just have to click once every 20 minutes to make sure your characters are auto retaliating. And as long as you have some way to not take damage by sustaining your prayer or the health in some other way, you're good to go there. You'll just be gaining combat XP. And then there's a few useful shops, lots of rewards shops for various different mini games. We've got Zahur's Herblow store. This can be huge in the late game when you're trying to like max out your Herblower or whatever. You can just get him to bottle all the potions for you, save you a ton of time, not having to worry about that xp -less activity. We've also got some shops in Sofnum and Nada and Alcarid. Nothing major to get from any of them. There are some rune items available in that Nada shop, but nothing crazy really. There is of course the Alcarid gem store, which is a great way to train up your crafting. 
in really any stage of the game and of course it's always infinite stock in leagues so definitely the Alcred gem store is actually one to take note of but other than that I don't think there's a great deal of shops that you'll be wanting to rinse in leagues the main attraction of course being that tombs of a mascot now the desert is of course great as a range region because of the tombs of a mascot giving you that Mazori armor because of the dry god blow pipe that you can now get from the calphite queen and because you can get twisted bow from the tombs as well you can pretty much get everything you want for ranged in this one area except for like a crossbow i guess but you can make a rune crossbow in literally any zone in the game so yeah you're good to go very very strong if you're picking ranged you should be picking desert really not that we actually know yet if there is style picking you might not have to pick one particular combat style this year it's unclear at the at the current time of making this video but if if you do and you are going range focus you definitely want desert in your array i think moving on to the fremenic isles we have all these different islands here most important one probably being luna isle because it gives you the luna spell book right off the bat we have dragon slayer 2 horror from the deep auto pop secrets of the north mountain daughter everything auto completed except for the desert treasure 2 requirements basically this doesn't unlock your ancients through prereqs but it gets everything you need for these yeah usually secrets of the north would require you to have done desert treasure one and curse of the empty lord after it and the general shadow but it doesn't do the desert treasure one bit is basically it so you don't get ancients but you get luna straight away you get access to all the different islands here you can fight Vorkath as soon as you feel like. Not only that, you can fight the Dagonoff Kings, the Phantom Musper, and anything in the Waterbirth Island Dungeon or the Fremenic Slayer Dungeon. We've got Rune and Adamant Dragons available as well, as Completion of Dragon Slayer 2 does unlock the Lifkran Vault on Fossil Island. You need Fremenic to be able to get in there, so Frem's the only way you can kill Rune and Addy Dragons. Get yourself a Dragon Crossbow if you feel like doing that. we got Duke Succulus 2 in that Gorok Dungeon, alongside the phantom musper all the rares that they have to offer you got the nezi helm both the standard and the upgraded version with the basilisk jaw leaf bladed weaponries the brine saber just to throw on top of that the dagonoff king's rings and all their other rares and their echo versions rares which are absolutely busted in terms of mini games you have the blast furnace that is a great place to sit and get a ton of smithing done very very quickly especially with the boosted experience rates not to mention the extra resources coming in from miscellanea for an entire league are certainly going to be an extra asset in your pocket that you can use to your advantage definitely make sure to get your miscellaneous loaded up and online as, as soon as you can after accessing fremenic there's a herb patch here too in weiss along with a spirit tree on miscellaneous and a bush patch right next to it we got the relica poh and rooftop courses the hunter area up there with the polar stuff the penguin agility course astral altar and a mine on jitsu and there we have the echo boss the dagonoff king's upgraded version these will be able to give you not only the best in slot tribrid ring better than any other ring in the game but also the same thing in your next slot absolutely busted it kind of makes it feel like an auto pick region i'm not gonna lie but i did fremenic last year so i'm not sure i want to do it again even though these are disgustingly good if you if you don't want to try hard and you just want to get some insane power-ups this leagues go for this because it, it'll make you feel like a an absolute machine not to mention with useful shops in the area like the keldergrim stonemason you will be able to buy all of the construction supplies you could ever want baba yaga's magic shop which has access to all kinds of runes again in unlimited stock you can buy any runes you need there it's one of my favorite rune shops to visit as an iron man because it has everything we've got jutitsu with an ore and fish store might not seem too relevant until you realize it's infinite stock and in the late game when you have to make a shit ton of stuff to try and get those big point tasks done if you're grinding out late points these are important shops to have access to because you can get a ton of coal or gold or to level your smithing up and likewise fish for the cooking not for 
actual eating, but just for cooking XP in, in the late game. You've also got some shops around Relica and Miscellanea, though nothing too major to take into account from those. The Lunar Spellbook, of course, offers a lot of utility in spellcasting. You get to do various things like plank make, bake pies if you want, or degrime herbs, or make multi elemental runes. Not to mention you get access to the Champions Guild thanks to DS2. You get Avers automatically completed even though you don't have Mauritania or the other regions. So you can claim Avers device as soon as as you unlock Fremenic. Very nice to have and you can upgrade it at Vorkaf of course. We got Miscellaneous as we already mentioned and I couldn't not shout out the ability to become a penguin. You might not think this is important. But if you end up chasing clues down, let me tell you, you're going to end up on Penguin Isle a lot. And the first three times, you'll probably be frustrated about it. But by the fourth time, man, you're in the way of the Penguin. You're one with those little motherfuckers waddling around, drumming on the bongos. Yeah, there's a Penguin with bongos. If you don't know what I'm talking about, sign up for Fremenic and you'll find out. This is a great all-around region to pick. I would err against picking it alongside Valamore, personally, simply for the reason that both of them have that high-level construction shop, and if you pick in both regions, then it's redundant to have it in one of them, whereas if you have one of them, you've got that one benefit. That doesn't mean that the other things they have aren't, like, gonna work well together. They probably would. It's just one little blip in my head that makes me think, hmm, maybe don't pick those together because you're wasting that little bit of potential that could perhaps be more useful from another region. Fremenic though, great all round, especially with the Echo buffs this year. You're never going to take those off. Like, if you have these two items, you're never going to take them off. There's never a reason to. Ever. Ever, ever. Ever, ever. And moving on now to the massive and magical Kandarin for selecting this region, you will automatically complete Monkey Madness 2, Swan Song, and King's Ransom, which means you'll be able to get straight into the Knight's Way of Training Grounds to unlock yourself the Chivalry rate and piety prayers as well as full access to apatol for that early dragon sim to carry your melee gameplay there's not too much high level content on offer here with kraken and thermate being the two bosses that the region has to offer both of which being very simple slayer bosses demonic gorillas are actually posing the most challenge out of the npcs in this area and providing a solid grind to back it up to give you that zenite jewelry some of the best jewelry in the game outside of the Fremenic <laughs> Echo content that we just went over. Especially for Mage though, you've got that Tormented Bracelet and you'll also get yourself the Occult Necklace from Thermi for an extra Mage boost, another Mage boost from Thermi that you might get, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. You've also got the Warp Scepter and the Trident of the Seas, so a great curve with your powered staffs. You've got the Wizard's Guild, so you can get Mystic Rubs early on. Basically, this is a mage region in the same way that you should probably pick desert for a ranged build you should probably pick Kandarin for a mage build it doesn't mean you have to but there's a lot on offer here and unless you've just picked it before and don't want to do the same again which I can get because I picked Kandarin last time and some of the grinds are massive it is really really solid for a mage build so definitely definitely consider it if you are going down that route in terms of the mini games, there's not a great deal of exciting stuff on offer here. You can get some AFK done at Nightmare Zone. There's Chompy Bird Hunting, which nobody ever wants to do, and Gnome Restaurant Delivery, which nobody ever wants to do. But I'm sure there'll be league tasks for both of them, so you'll probably end up doing them anyway. Fishing Trawler, same case there, really, but it does give you the Angler's Outfit quite easily for an extra fishing XP boost. And then we've got Barbarian Assault and Castle Wars. Getting yourself a Fighter's Torso, definitely nothing to sniff at. It's pretty usable in end game content if you, you just want a solid melee chess piece. And it'll be relatively populated enough to be able to get it done because people will be trying to do tasks and whatnot through the league. And then you've got Castle Wars, which is something you will probably AFK with a friend to get the task done once and then not touch again for the rest of the league, so that's not really relevant. Tons of patches though, four allotment patches and two herb patches, some trees and fruit trees too in the gnomish areas we've got the ardy markets and the ardy knives for plenty of thieving both on cake stalls and the knights themselves for gp later on as a training method we've got rooftop courses in ardy and sears village 
Fishing Guild, Legends Guild, Wizards Guild, as I already mentioned, some Hunter areas in Piscatorius, and the Monkfish in Piscatorius, as I already said as well. We've got Red Chin Chompers down in Feldip Hills, one of the only two regions you can get them in the game, the other being Taranwin, so Red Chin's definitely a valuable place to get them, especially if you're going with Animal Wrangler, the Tier 1 Relic, you get Double Chins, and they always succeed on the catch. You nil player and house if you want to be situated down there and the arania altar for some extra room crafting method it can be especially potent in leagues if something like the crystal of memories comes back again which it has multiple times previously and allows you to to teleport back to where you came from when you go to a bank so you bank and then go straight back to the arania altar for example you can get a lot of high room crafting xp that way and finally, the Echo Bosses and the useful shops. The Echo Boss is the Thermiolia Smoke Devil, and it offers the Devil's Element an offhand, which gives you an extra 6% magic strength and doubles the amount of effectiveness you get from elemental weaknesses on enemies. That means if an enemy is 50% weaker to fire, instead it is a 100% weaker to fire. If it was 100, it's 200. And it also provides unlimited elemental runes when equipped. It's going to save you a lot of invent slots and trouble and allow you the versatility to go with whatever you want when you want it. In terms of shops, Kandarin is a massive area so there are a lot of shops to take into account. Particular ones of note are in the Tree Gnome Stronghold, there's a ton of unique little items there. We've also got the ranging guild shops where you can buy things like arrow shafts and the arrow tips to get a ton of fletching XP. Again, with unlimited stock in those shops, keep in mind. We've got the wizard skill for your mystic robes and your runes. Some shops in Catherby may have things uh, fishing wise. Don't know if what the stocks on those shops are, but there could be some relevant stuff there. And the general store in Ardy is kind of weird, as well as the West Ardy general store you'd get, which is kind of like a high alk value general store when you go there, so it's good for selling items too. And then with extra features there, I think I've already mentioned most of them, aside from maybe the apatology costs, the pork Khazard charter ships, and the barbarian skills training those extra little buffs that they provide. Moving on to Mauritania. This time around, all the way up to Taste of Hope is completed. That leaves just one quest in the Vampire Quest line to finish it off, but gives you access to the Theatre of Blood and most other things, just not the Hallowed Sepulchre and Vess in Haza itself. Great Brain Robber in Ghost Ahoy are also completed, so you can get straight into Port of Asmatis or mostly Harmless. And Mauritania's got the second raid that we're covering, Theatre of Blood. And as well as the Theatre of Blood rares, you can of course get all raid mega rares as we have previously stated. Tons of combat content in this region to go along with it, from Firewatch Sentinels and Araxites to Araxor, the Nightmare, the Theatre itself, everything that's in the Slayer Tower, the Grotesque Guardians, the Barrows Brothers, and all their drops. Six different sets right there of gear. Black Mask, the only region that can get a Slayer Helm is Mauritania. If you want Slayer Helm in leagues, you need a Black Mask, you're gonna need Mauritania. Blood Shards too for that Amulet of Blood Fury, give you some extra healing on your melee hits, gonna be key if you're going for one of those melee builds and you want some self-sustain in certain scenarios. We've got Shades of Morton, if you fancy getting yourself some blood bark or a fancy coffin to wear on your back, some extra prayer robes on the offer there too, I believe. And the Ring of Endurance from the Hallowed Sepulchre, as well as all the juicy loot you can get from those chests in there. Not to mention the Salve Amulet for extra damage and accuracy against all undead. There is a literal shit ton of content here. I don't even think I put a Raxor rares on that list, but yeah, those two, the tortured army thing and the noxious halberd, you can get those two. Those should be on that list, but they aren't, so I'm adding them with my voice, and I don't know why I'm explaining that. Mini games, yay, trouble brewing, no one's ever done that. I think it's a diary task, but sure that exists. Hallowed Spulker, as I've already mentioned, great place to train your agility and get some extra loot on the way. Well, the Skull Ball, not so great way to chain your agility. And Temple Trekking can offer a variety of very useful rewards. You can get stuff like silver bars really easily, bowstrings, coal, some random ass herbs, 
You can get toad flax there, I think. I think that's what you get. Or you can get these little books, which you use to increase your skills, which again are boosted by the same XP rates as everything else. So you could get like a tome of 5k Slayer XP times by 16. Pretty good. Temple Trek's definitely nothing to sniff at here. We got two herb patches as well, although one of them only unlocks with access to the elite Mauritania diary. The one on Harmony Isle, you can't use that until you've got the elite diary done. So do put an asterisk next to that, but one herb patch right from the beginning next to Port Phasmatis. Got the Canafish rooftop course for a great place to train your agility, but basically until you go to Sepulchre in this region. The Dale Essence Mine and True Blood Altar if you fancy doing some ring crafting that way and you will be able to get yourself a blood talisman from the general store in Canafis, so you don't need Guardians of the Rift or any other content to, to actually get that talisman this time around. We've got the Ectofunctus for a boosted prayer training method, which can be certainly very useful with Golden God, not having to actually grind it all if you just go to the Ectofunctus with some money and that's all it takes, that'll be amazingly quick prayer XP. We've got Vyas for Thieving for that Blood Shard, as we mentioned, and a Werewolf Agility cost that I don't think anybody has ever visited. And the Echo Boss is the Grotesque Guardian, so once you have got the Echo Orb, you'll be able to fight him without being on task for the chance at the Gloves of the Damned. And these count as an Amulet of the Damned, plus double the effects of all Barrow set effects and Amulet of the Damned effects. Pretty powerful effect. They're also the same stats as Barrow's Gloves themselves, or maybe even slightly higher, I can't remember the exacts. So very strong, pretty much best in slot gloves, except for maybe the Valmor ones, depending on which effects you're going to get more use out of. I've already mentioned most of these rewards over here that come from shops like the Hallowed Sepulchre Reward Store and the Temple Tricking Rewards, and Port Phasmatis doesn't really have a great deal of useful shops going on. Canafis has some weird stuff, there's a meat shop, plus the taxidermist but that's not overly relevant we've got uh, this building shop as well may have some useful stuff in it but it's it's low level building supplies plus stuff for uh, the shades of mortar not like the same building supplies you'd get in valmor or fremenic so don't expect anything crazy from the shops in this area mainly you're picking this for its combat content it is a combat region and there is so much to do and unlock gear wise in this region, especially for melee with Theater of Blood as the end game. Moving on to Turanwin, probably the smallest area. You have just access to the elf lands and the underground pass as a part of this, and you have completed Song of the Elves and everything preceding it. Instantly, you can get into Thrift Dynasty, the elven capital, and go into the gauntlet as soon as you've done this if you want, and I would recommend doing so, because there's fuck all else to do in Turanwin. <laughs> I mean, there's Zora, so let's not forget about Zora, the toxic blowpipe and the serpentine helm. Definitely a grind that some people enjoy, not a boss that I particularly enjoy, but Zora is there. And we also have the Iowa Slayer Dungeon for some extra combat content. Overall, the main draw to this region is in fact that gauntlet, especially considering it is also the Echo Boss of the region, though we will get to that. You of course have all the crystal equipment that you can get, the armor, the Bofaden Hand and Da Dun Da, the Blade of Seldor, the Dark Bow, Zalcano things so you can get crystal tools for the styles that you didn't pick as your tier 1 relic, as long as you got the dragon equivalents as well, keep in mind. We got leaf bladed weaponry from the Karasks down in the Slayer Dungeon, as well as the Mist Bladed Battle Staff, Enhanced Crystal Teleport Seed. You can crush those down for as many crystal shards as you want. And actually, you can get some decent skill in from like smithing and crafting XP out of crystal seed singing because of the amount of resources that you can generate in leagues. You can get pretty much infinite money and buy as much stuff as you want or, you know, you'll have tons of shards because the amount of loot you get and all that sort of thing. You'll basically be set to, to boost as much of your skills as you can with Crystal Seed singing. Uh, and it, it, other skilling content, you've got the Zalcano itself. Some great rewards on offer there. Other than the Crystal Tool Seeds, you've got just great smithing supplies and sometimes rune drops and other things too. Recently, all Crystal Shard drop rates were increased around Priftiness as well, so it's a great time to be in the region. It is very profitable at the moment. 
and there's tons just to do in that city itself to be honest you've got crystal implants even hardwood trees that are just chilling waiting for you to cut them down and giving you shards like every 25 logs a mine with soft clay if you for some reason you feel like doing that sacred eels which get your zora scales so you can make anti-venoms thriftiness poh and agility course which also gives you crystal shards one per lap we've got divine potions the only region to have access to them so that you can get the five minutes full buff rather than having it degrade over time like normal potions do of course you do have that 10 hp cost every time you use one but more than worth it as i'm sure many players will agree we've got the death altar for rune crafting so it's the only region that can rune craft death runes and a couple of allotment patches but no herb patch we do have a crystal tree as well to go with the fruit tree in leisure and the echo hunluff which is available if you do the crypts of gauntlet you might get an e echo orb you get the echo orb you unlock echo hunluff then you no longer have to do prep in the gauntlet you can just keep fighting echo hunluff and getting full gauntlet rewards plus a chance at this crystal blessing which by the way is kind of fucking nutty how about a plus five prayer bonus in the one slot that's never fucking used your ammo slot and why not chuck in the bonus that if you're wearing crystal armor its effect is going to apply to every melee weapon in the game not just the blade of Seldor or the bow fan han han ha you can use the crystal armor with a soul reaper axe if you want and have plus 30 percent accuracy and damage a scythe whatever you want and this little bad boy is only gonna sit in your ammo slot by the way did i mention you don't have to do prep you can keep fighting the echo humluff and getting the regular rewards how many buffers you want because you can have six if you want 12 isn't seeming unreasonable and that's before you open the closet of blade of cell doors i've got back there i can't lie i'm kind of getting hype about Taranwin, and this crystal blessing is a big part of it but there's tons of shops as well that are useful so let's not forget about those as well as the enhanced crystal chest some cool rewards on offer there you could even get an onyx out of it we've got rune shops that sell pretty much every rune you could ever desire one of the only places to get a decent supply of cosmic runes in the game we've got things selling up to rune armor and weaponry various other shops that can give you pretty much anything you need but did i mention you don't have to do the gauntlet prep guys not that i actually mind gauntlet prep i find it quite fun but that cuts so much time out of the run if the boss is like doable you can just repeat it it'll cut so much time out of the farm of course, Turan would usually be seen as a ranged region, and it still is with the crystal, the buffer, and the toxic blowpipe all on offer here. There are a ton of ranged things to look at, but the crystal blessing does make you think that more, I guess, hybrid -y range slash melee build, just wearing crystal is definitely a feasible thing. You can bring any weapon alongside it from any other region, and it'll absolutely slap. So you could consider this both as a ranged main with a splash of melee or as a melee main with a splash of range or just wanting a solid ranged option even if you're not planning to buff that, you know what I mean? Moving on to the wilderness. Not many quests here, just enter the abyss and access to the abyss but keep in mind that the runecrafting altars are restricted to the areas that you have chosen. You can only go to places that you have unlocked. Everyone knows what the wilderness is. The only really note I want to put on this is that a death in the wilderness counts as a PVM death, even if it was to another player. If someone kills you, they don't get to take your stuff. It goes to a gravestone like it would if you died to a goblin in Lumbridge. You get to go and reclaim it from death you're good so there's literally like no reason to pvp except for spite which means you're not as anywhere nearly as likely to get attacked by someone in leagues as you are in the main game the wilderness is kind of a free zone like you can just go there and play the content without worrying about getting hit too much maybe now and then someone will attack you i can't say for sure because i haven't played in the wilderness in a leagues of myself but I, I can't imagine anyone would like they're trying to do their own thing right and they stand to gain nothing from it and you stand to lose nothing from it so worse comes to worse yeah someone kills you and then you just go back to what you were doing without having suffered anything for it that coupled with the fact that a lot 
lot of the entry fees have been reduced or removed means that the content isn't going to punish you for those deaths either so just keep that in mind the wilderness has a bit of an asterisk next to it because it is still the wilderness but people can't take your stuff here that being said this is all about the combat this region in fact it's only about the combat you'll see i've removed the extra one that i usually have for mini games because there are no mini games here there are just bosses we've got all the wilderness bosses venonati spindle vetian calv callisto and Artio, chaos fanatic the crazy archaeologist chaos elemental scorpio revenants and the revenant maledictus which by the way free entry to the cave king black dragon and its echo variant corporeal beast which can be taken down easier with the echo tools from king black dragon and crystallia slayer which i believe is a normal slayer master the same as any others in leagues we've got all the different rare weapon drops that you can get from those revenants and the big crystals and emblems and shit like that we've got all the wilderness boss rares like the dragon two hand and pickaxe dragon boots as well from spiritual mages in the wilderness god wars dungeon corporeal beast rares so you can get yourself that spirit shield dust devils in the slayer cave odium ward and maldiction ward can be made by killing a variety of the bosses and putting the shields together that's a great ranged offhand and a mage offhand available on offer and the melee offhand you can get that from echo kbd dagon eye rubs from laren's chest if you do some slayer in the wilderness and the mage arena one and two capes for a great cape slot in the magic scenarios as well as that void waker which slaps and stabs in the face very hard now in terms of skilling there is a little bit here we've got the abyss rune crafting as we mentioned earlier though like i say that is restricted we've got the fountain of rune doesn't give xp but gives you unlimited runes and can recharge dragon stone jewelry providing the prerequisite quests have been completed or auto completed we got the resource area for whatever the fuck is in there i don't know who goes there and the agility course which is actually very good and profitable and is now free as well and your lap count does not reset on death so i think this just means your lap count will never reset unless it resets when you walk out in which case you just get yourself killed by a skeleton and then it doesn't reset for the entire league seems good the higher your lap count is the more rewards you get up to like a certain point at which it's capped you want to be above that cap so you're getting the maximum rewards at all times and there is a ton of juicy loot on offer there so you'll get tons of alcohols as well as blighted supplies which i think are able to be used anywhere during the leagues i think that things like wilderness weapons and blighted supplies are able to be used anywhere put an asterisk next for that because i'm not researched enough into the wilderness to know for sure we've also got the chaos altar both the runecraft and the prayer one you can sacrifice bones at that altar for a chance to save them and get 350 percent bonus xp out of it anyway we've got the air and earth obelisk for charging up orbs if you fancy doing some crafting and making some gp that way as well as black chins and salamanders for the hunting and dark crab fishing for the fishing and the cooking xp and as i mentioned we have the kbd who offers that offhand that is more beneficial for melee but still nothing to slouch at defensively or prayer and the bonus granting you full immunity to all stats effects in the game is certainly a very spicy one to have in your arsenal not to mention the thunder kopesh is also available from echo kbd it is a weapon with a special attack that hits twice and every attack even the regular ones have a 20 percent chance to put an aoe lightning bolt under the target hitting anything in a 3 by 3 radius with half of the damage from the original attack a very very cool one-handed weapon with a four attack speed speed four tick attack speed so it's going to be pretty uh, comparable to like a, a d sim or a whip except it can also aoe things nearby and it has a pretty cool special attack that gives you an additional lightning bolt guaranteed we've got the mage arena bank with a couple of shops there and the bandit duty free shop in the wilderness where you can sell items for the rock value other than that no shops to take note of laren's keys though can definitely be useful there's also the muddy chest lava dragons can be great to farm as well as zombie pirates and the elder chaos druids tons of combat to do if you've ever wanted to kill something in the wilderness but you're scared of pkers now's the time because you don't have to worry they can't take your stuff you get it all back and you also get the forex enclave and the restoration pool uh, for a nice little recharge between any tasks that you do at any point in the game just grab yourself a jeweling ring or some other way of teleporting there with a relic 
And moving on to our final raid region, we have Great Karend, aka Azea, even though Azea is the whole content which includes Valamore, but everyone still calls it Z, so Great Karend slash Z. Auto completed this time around is a kingdom divided, so you will have full access to the RK spellbook as soon as you unlock the region, including thralls and all the extra spells that you get from completing that quest. You'll also get the Caress Manoirs completed. You'll be able to teleport anywhere with that straight away upon unlocking this region. As we mentioned, we got the Chambers of Zeric as the raid here. As all the other raids, it can unlock all mega rares. You can get Twisted Bow Shadow or a Cypher Vita here. On top of that, you've also got Skateezer, who can give you an Onyx or a pet or some other cool things. And Seracnis, the random spider that gives you a cudgel for smacking things over the head with. Yeah, that's cool. We've got Hespori. Yeah, that's cool. We've got the Alchemical Hydra, Slayer Boss, if you're that way inclined. You can get the Brimstone Ring from from that and other things. I feel like I sound sarcastic, but I'm not intending to sound sarcastic. There's a lot of content here. The current catacombs, of course, give you a massive Slayer content, as do Lizardmen Shamans and the Dragon Warhammer that they drop, and Konar Slayer, which I believe is just a normal Slayer Master, same as any other. It may still be Aerial Opt, I'm not sure. You'll have to find out for yourself by picking Great Current. Also access the Mimic here if you are a clue scroll type of person. And we got the bottomless compost bucket if you're a farmer to go with the farming guild that you will spend so much time in and the woodcutting guild that you will spend little time in. Don't forget about the Arceus library for an extra ring crafting method and some mage XP if you want it in the early game, as well as the soul and blood alt altars for that late game ring crafting, the blast mine if you're a sadist and anglerfish for those animal wranglers going into the late game for some big food. Not to mention the host Sidious, P-O-H and two herb patches as well as a plethora of other farming patches between the farming guild and the rest of Kororund. There is plenty on offer here. I've also got that tide farm so you can get the farming outfit as well as aerial fishing so you can get the fishing outfit too if you want and the winter tod with all the pyromancers garb the Tome of Fire and the goodies that can be unlocked within. Recently updated, so you no longer need to take food there and you can basically do it at any level. You don't have to rush it at the start of your account. Winter Todd's fantastic now. It's going to be a great place to earn some resources and cool rares this leagues. Generally, a very balanced variety of content in Corrand with a lot to offer here and there for anyone. And it's capped with its Echo Boss, Hespori. Offering the nature's reprisal, this thing is similar to a salamander, but beefed up in every regard and charged with nature and earth runes rather than needing horrible tar and bollocks like that. It can attack with all three styles and it fires projectiles with all three styles, which means that you can melee attack things at a distance. Crazy, right? And it's not that bad at any of them. It's actually a fairly solid tribrid weapon holding up on its own next to something like a whip or an equivalent in one of the other styles. In terms of useful shops, there's a few. Daryl's Ranging Surplus can give you some arrows or arrow tips and Frankie's Fishing Emporium has some nice raw fish available including sharks which will be sure to keep you stocked through the leagues with any raw fish you need to cook for cooking XP and eat for healing. We've also got Thurias and Regas Rune Shops so you'll be able to get soul runes and law runes in thick supply. I'm not sure that the cosmic runes available from those though, so those ones will still be slightly out of reach. As well as the farming guild shops, so you can get those bag plants if you want them, and Toothy's pickaxes to get a rune pick. As we said earlier, the RK spellbook is unlocked as soon as Great Corrand is, so you can get those thralls going as long as you have the magic level and the runes to cast them basically, and they will be very powerful as they always are. Extra DPS never hurts. We've also got the Thor First Dungeon where you can get grubby keys to get some extra potion drops, herbs and spicy stuff in the early to mid game. Spiders there are a great target for barraging or chilling or any of the new AoE attacks that have been introduced with echo items this time around. You can tackle organised crime for a bit of extra combat XP and some planks 
And you can steal artifacts for... I don't know if that's agility or thieving or both. No one ever does that. I just I had to put it there. There is also, of course, a ton of transport around Corrand. You've got the minecart system available for free now because the quest's already done, so it's free as soon as you unlock the region. Zerik's Talisman, very easy to get and charge up with some very useful teleports all around the region. And Chris Memoirs, you basically can always get exactly where you need to in Corrand with these three tools. It's very easy to navigate. And that leads us to our final and newest region, Valamore. Auto completed, we have Children of the Sun, Twilight's Promise, Heart of Darkness, and At First Light, which means you'll be able to access a lot of the content in Valamore off the base. You won't be able to get into Cam to Run for Perilous Moons until you've got the Slayer and Hunter requirements down. That being said, in Leagues, that is very quick and easy to get. But the rest of it, you will have access to it. You'll be able to get into the Ruins of Tapioca to fight the Frost Nagura and pick up some hammers as soon as you walk into Valamore. You can do that. They may slap you if you don't have your mage prayer up, so be warned. We've of course got the Force Coliseum and everything else here. So, yeah, getting up to Heart of Darkness is quite big because it means we can get straight into there with the Frost Nagua. Very nice, but you don't have Perilous Moons. So that's the only place that you're not going to be able to get off the rip here everything else you should have access to and speaking of the content in the area there is of course that perilous moons the new three bosses that each give different sets of mage range and melee gear making valamore a very balanced region to pick to offer something in all three styles the coliseum on the other hand gives you that designer's quiver at the end of it a massive range strength bonus and the ability to wield two different types of ammo at once which is kind of cool you can also combine it with the avers effect providing that avers is unlocked we've got huey who gives the new tome of earth as well as the soil pages to charge it and the dragon hunter wand a nice little bonus that could go very nicely alongside that elemental thing from the upgraded Thermi I'm thinking. We've got a Moxley ult as well to get those hammers even faster if you feel like taking on a tougher opponent and also to get, make sure you can get yourself a quick pendant of it to travel around the continent faster. Vadorvis has been moved to Valamore, it wasn't on that map that I had just a second ago but you can access the Stranglewood by talking to a guy uh, in like around here I think and he'll take you to Vardorvis, and we can kill that without Desert Treasure 2 now. If you missed that piece of news, you can kill all the Desert Treasure 2 bosses without DT2. You don't need the desert. We got the Nepotsley dungeon with the Perils Moons inside, and the other mobs that are in there, and the Ruins of Tapioca that I've already mentioned for the Frost Nagua. There's also Blue Dragons, Brutal Blue Dragons, Frost Crabs, Jellies. Plenty of cool things in there to kill and to get your chance at a moon key. Of course, there's also the Sunfire Fanatic Armor from the Colosseum. I skipped over that earlier. And the Echo Crystals that you can get, as well as the Tonsil Dicks of Rallos. That weird ranged weapon that I don't think I've ever actually seen in the game. we got the Sulfur Blades and Glacial Tomotley. Two double hitting weapons that are sure to be going hard with any melee buffs that we get from Combat Masteries. I know I'm definitely going to be using them. As well as, of course, all of our Dorvis's rare. You also have access to the new Master in Mixology Herb Law mini game activity. It makes your herbs go further, doesn't necessarily make the training faster, but there are some very nice rewards on offer here if you can grind it out. And if those points are faster, multiplied, like most other things are, then it might not be too bad to get yourself a chugging barrel so you can pre pot for a raid with everything in one device. That would certainly be cool to try. You've also got a herb patch on offer some other patches but I don't want to skip over the hunters rumors it's another key feature here I'm assuming that they will make this work the same as Slayer and Mahogany Homes and Clue Scrolls in that it will only give you hunter rumors in regions you have unlocked however this has not been confirmed yet if it's not that way then it's fucked Valamore's fucked so I, I can't imagine they wouldn't have 
done that, you can pretty much guarantee that this is going to be giving you rumours that you'll be able to do, otherwise there'll be uproar and they'll change it in the first few days anyway. We've got the Libation Ball and Bone Shards to give a sick training method, can be both AFK or Spam Clicked for massive gains, and it just gives you a great way to do all your press safely without having to run into the wilderness, not that that's as risky, but you also might not have the wilderness or the Ectophontus or an altar in your house that is not even as good value as this anyway. You've also got the house thieving, a great early way to get you thieving up in Valamort is pickpocketing those wealthy citizens from level 50 and then going into their houses and taking all the jewelry they've ever owned. Definitely a classic, a new classic method of training thieving, I will say. I, I enjoyed it a lot in the Wild West series that I do here on the channel. I've done a, a ton of house thieving and it was really good in that early game for me in Valamor. We've got a POH in Alderaan, so you'll be able to set your house there on the little island down south, as well as, as I mentioned, the Hunter's Guild, but the shops that come with it too, and the mixed hide armour, and you'll be able to get the Sunlight Hunter crossbow by buying the Hunter's crossbow at the Sunset Coast Charter Ships. That will be on sale special this league, so you can get the Sunlight Hunter's crossbow and fire that epic ranged weapon. As long as you've got Valamor, you don't need Kandarin as well for your nil. Kandarin Mines! Gives you an AFK way to get some prayer XP from Bone Shards and Mining XP and Moon Keys. And we've got Sunfire Ring Crafting if you want extra low hit on your fire spells, as well as some Ring Crafting XP. Haven Savannah, of course, offers a lot of different things to hunt too, and the Colossal Worm Agility course where you can earn yourself a Graceful Recall if for some reason you're a maniac who got Graceful in unlimited run energy formats. And last but not least, probably going to be the toughest of the Echo bosses, Soul Heredit. If you manage to complete the Colosseum, you will guaranteed get the Echo Crystal for Soul Heredit. You'll be able to fight him without doing the previous waves as many times as you want. Potentially, as a reward from this, you will only get given Quithers as a reward from this, rather than regular loot like everything else, because you're not doing the waves before it, whereas take the Colosseum for example, you don't have to do the prep, you still get the loot. Here, you only get the final wave loot basically, which is a quiver plus potentially one of these two items. The Sunlight Spear, which is a two-handed melee weapon, gives you sunlight stacks up to a max of 20. You spend those seven at a time to hit every NPC within three tiles with your damage being increased by 3% per prayer point that you have. Definitely huge alongside the Sunfire Fanatic armor that you can get from the Colosseum, so you can have tons of prayer bonus anyway. This thing can slap everything around you. It's probably gonna be great for any multi-combat slayer tasks like Dust Devils or Jellies. You can just be hitting one thing, oh, and it's charged up. Now I'll smack everything. Yeah, yeah, I just got a couple kills because that was a massive hit because I'm in all prayer gear. And to go with it, why not have the Sunlit Braces 100% bonus healing from all sources. These are insane. The defensive and attack qualities are not to sniff at either. They've got a bit of a me melee strength and even a range strength bonus, which is rare to see range strength bonus pretty much anywhere. So that's a nice effect to have. The healing though is insane. Sharks are 40 HP. I don't need to say any more than that. Shark Karambuang combo with this heals 76. Let that sink in. Shark Karambuang. 76. Yeah, they go hard. And it's not a slot that has a lot of competition in leagues with Barrow's gloves not being available unless you have Mauritania and you've got those gloves of the damned on. In terms of shops, Fortis offers quite a lot. You can get up to Addy gear in pretty much all the shops. There's a decent shield shop down on Alderin. There's a gem shop that sells uncut rubies, the only one in the game. Even better than the desert gem shop for training your crafting, especially when you consider the fact that it's infinite stock. Definitely be hitting that up. Camterum has a bunch of shops. You can buy a room pickaxe there. You can get uh, herb law supplies there. There's rune shop there that has like law runes and death runes, though it doesn't have cosmics or soul. I'm not sure about bloods. There's quite a lot of range of shops basically. You'll be able to buy most general resources 
not to mention you do have that stone cutter supplies so you can get all the high level construction tools things like condensed gold that you would never usually buy in the main game that can be used to very quickly get 50 million construction xp especially if you're a golden god and as i mentioned you can get the hunter's crossbow from chart ships on sunset coast we also have the quetzal transport system to get around as well as that pendant of eight available from monsters in the ruins of tapioc and there's the moon key down there in the ruins that can have a variety of somewhat useful rewards or you could get a spinach roll like i did see the wild west series and that folks is the end of my slides like i said i will leave a link to this in the description of the video but that's all i have to say on the matter hopefully i have gone over everything as thoroughly as is humanly possible i feel like i've been talking for like an hour and a half but i'm sure i'll trim that down to something closer to an hour for y'all if you have any questions if any of them was unclear i will reply feel free to leave them in the comments no matter what you have to say if no questions let me know what regions you're thinking of picking at the moment it'd be cool to get a general sense of the crowd and see where people are leaning towards honestly i am so unsure right now because i like a bunch of the echo bosses from regions that i wasn't planning on picking and now i want to go and do them Whereas Valamore, which I was 100% set on, and I'm still like 95% set on. I know the Echo Boss is the hardest thing in the region, which I've never even done. Maybe I should log on to my main and try the Colosseum. I'll figure that out. Let me know in the comments, though, what are you thinking of taking? And hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe so you see all the future reveals. I'm going to be covering them here on the channel, as well as other guides. I'll have Day 1 routes for all three of the available Tier 1 relics. Those will be coming out soon enough, as soon as we've got some info on the task list. Tons more content to come. My own league's progress. I'm going to shut up talking now. Thank you all for staying with me if you're still here. It's been a blessing as always. Look after yourselves. Be lovely to one another. I'll see you on the next one.